Hey, Lee Bradshaw here with 127 Consulting. You can find me at 127consulting.com. That's O-N-E, the number 27 and the word consulting.com. Hi, my name is Matt Crump. I've been known as a lot of things over my life. The class clown, the army guy, the rocker guy, the car guy, and the guitar guy. I've also made a lot of mistakes in my life, but the best thing I ever did, let's give my heart and life to Jesus Christ. He led me down a lifelong path and introduced me to my awesome bride, Rockin' Robin, blessed us with two incredible kids, and has given me a hope through some of the absolute toughest times of my life. See, I'm battling stage four cancer, and although that sucks, (laughs) it's opened my eyes and heart to a hope I never knew this way before and moments I never noticed. I call those God's Got This Moments, and they reveal hope like never before. Today, I'd like to welcome you to Hope Revealed. I love helping businesses get more clear. Yeah, well, I think it gave you a different, I think that that moment created a different perspective for you in your life. That's for Mm -hmm. sure. Mm-hmm. And uh, as a result of that perspective, uh, it helped you to to live into some of the things you're living into today. And part of that is to help people understand the value of what they have. Okay. You know, those fake flowers behind you are those real flowers. That that is a real orchid. Is it really? I bought it. I really bought it. Yeah, I was. Nice. Last. I've named it Planty off the Lego Movie. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to Hope Revealed. I am here with my friend Lee Bradshaw and I'm super excited to be able to share with you uh, his story, his life and what he's doing. There's no doubt that he has some some really interesting aspects to to his life that I believe can be really beneficial to you. So Lee, you and I have been talking for, for a while. Um, uh, I guess we've known each other for almost a year or so, probably around mm-hmm. there. Yeah, yeah. And um, you have been through a few things in the past year in your life, and you have uh, recently just kind of launched out into an area on your own. Mm-hmm. Uh, 127 Consulting is the name of your, of your business. I'd like to get into that a little bit and talk about some of your, your past experiences with how you really enjoyed and got into the idea of, of story, what that means to you, and, and how you can you know, relate that to your business and whatnot. But mm-hmm. before we get into all that, um, people just like to know who you are. You know, is that like a real beard or are you just trying to, to are you competition with me or what's going on here today? Yeah, I used to have one about that. I used to have one that wasn't actually that size, but I had a, um, a martial arts guy grab it and yank on it really hard one time and told me that to wasn't it. So I stopped at that point. That was it. That was <laughs> exactly. amazing. Exactly. Yeah, I have one of those too. It's called my wife. Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, but it's still there. So, I mean, you know, just whatever. You got it. I tried. Got it. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Lee. Yeah, buddy. Well, um have a business like you mentioned it's called 127 consulting and essentially what we do is is help you identify understand and communicate more clearly with your target audience so i found a lot of times businesses have an idea of what their audience wants or either they know their product or their concept really well but they don't really know necessarily how to put that in terms that people um, are actually understanding or they <laughs> what do you mean by that uh, well <laughs> okay so i was ta- talking with a client um, the other day and as we were going through some things uh she's very logical you know she's really really good at what she does very logical but oftentimes people buy emotionally and then justify it with logic so uh, we had to go through and uh, reword some of her copy and some other things so that it made sense on an emotional side if that makes right. sense. So once we started doing that, people started paying a little more attention. And it, just, it was just clearer. And that makes sense. It makes complete sense. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's funny. Um, uh, uh, one uh, gentleman I know, he says that people across the board buy emotionally. He said people buy jet airplanes emotionally and then justify it with logic. So, <laughs> That's um, when they have to tell their wife and their accountant. Yeah, 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 exactly. 
exactly. So, so I understand that there's a new addition to your family. Uh, coming up soon, yeah, about three months. Uh, three months, uh, we're going to have our another little boy. And then we've got uh, four right now. So we'll be a family of uh, seven. So that's exciting. Oh, my Lord. I think it's actually eight from what I understand. You have a new adopted uh, member of your family named Planty. Is that right? Oh, Planty, yeah. Plant, well, Planty is my little plant. You asked earlier if Planty was real or, or uh, fake, and it's an actual orchid. I feel very, you know, uh, I don't have a green thumb, but I feel very excited. Yeah, how long have you had Planty? I've Planty I've had for about a month. So a she's month? Not dead, she's not dead yet. We might have to come back and do another podcast there you go. just to see if Planty <laughs> survives. <laughs> there you go. There you go. You got it. Oh, that's amazing. So uh, tell me a little bit about um, – about some of your experience that you've had in the past with uh, yeah. uh, the power of story. I mean, I think stories have been around for a long, long time, but you know, in yeah. the marketing world, the past few years, all of a sudden now story is a big thing. So tell me, tell me a little bit about that in your life and, and what that, what that's all about. Basically the concept is that uh, using story, I mean, as you mentioned earlier, the using story is, has been around for forever. So using that, that power of story itself to uh, tell your business's story. Um, or actually it's, it's more of your customer story itself. You'll, you'll find out how to talk to an audience a lot better than what you probably currently are doing. You know, what does, what is the benefit of that for somebody who's in a, has their own business or mm -hmm. let's say they're you know, a doctor or a real estate agent or, you know, a coach or a consultant or whatever. What, what, yeah. what does story, I mean, you just tell a story or what do you do? Well, I, I like, um, I like a lady named Danny Johnson. She says, uh, facts, uh, tell and story sell. I think that when you take someone through a story with a beginning, a middle, and an end, um, people are more uh, focused on that. There, there's more intrigue as opposed to just telling them about you know your specials or why you're so great or, or whatever. So if you can run them through a story, people will pay attention uh, more than what they will if, if they're not, um, if they're kind of maybe less engaged. I guess that's maybe a way to say it. A story helps you to, to engage your audience a little better. When it comes down to story, um, you know, do you have to tell somebody a story for 10 minutes? Is it something that you could tell somebody on a 30 second uh, commercial or ad or? Yeah, I mean, it, it really depends on what platform you're doing it on. So let's say you're uh, maybe doing a video. Uh, you know, maybe you're doing a video ad or, or something along that lines. You can tell a story, uh, letting them know that you've been through what they've been through. So there's a little bit of empathy. You can tell us, uh, add in that story, how you overcame that. So there's some authority. So they see you as an authority there. Um, if you were doing a website, you can talk, you know, about some of the same things in there, but it, it just gives you a lot of options and it gives you a lot of options so that people can identify with you so they can relate with you. And as you, as you know, people like to do business with people they know, like, and trust. Right. And if they see that you've been through their problem and through their situation and they understand you, then that's, you've really overcome a really big hurdle there. Is there a, a story you can think of that comes to your mind? And I didn't ask you this question before, so I'm throwing yeah. you for, for a loop here, but uh -uh. is there a story that you can think of right right now that is something that really impacted you in your past, not mm -hmm. necessarily a personal story, but something that you've heard or something you've been through that could be an example of, of, of a power story. Maybe the story of my father, a uh, story of my father passing away is, is maybe a good example. Oh, that's uh, a personal story. Yeah. That's yeah. It's personal, but I think a lot of people, I think a lot of people can either identify it or it will make them think, you know, about the relationships, that kind of a thing. Right. Uh, but yeah, when, when I was uh, 12 years old, I was woken up by my mother in the middle of the night about two o'clock or so. And she said, you know, get up. Something's the matter with your father. And so I saw outside, I saw the ambulance lights going, you know, through the, through the curtains and whatnot and got up and saw the, um, uh, saw the paramedics in my house. And my father's a big guy, he's about 6'3". Uh, 300 pounds and saw them trying to, to weave him uh, through the entryway of our house to get him out to the ambulance. And, you know, it was woken out of a dead sleep. I didn't know what was going on. And they finally got him out and got him uh, in the ambulance and carted off to the hospital and he passed away there. 
really quickly. Now, the, the really strange thing was he, they never found out what actually happened. Hmm. You know, did the autopsy, never found he out. Had, they knew had, had he had health issues prior or anything? Or? No, not, nothing that, that we knew of. Wow. Uh, they thought he may have been, um, they thought he may have had a bug bite or something because he was allergic to uh, certain insects but they didn't find anything like that. So it could have been sleep apnea, but they just never really had a resolution. You wow. know, it was concerning that, but it was just very, very sudden. And, uh, that, uh, evening before that, my mom and he were wrestling. My mom's probably a good foot or less shorter than he is. <laughs> they were joking around and, you know, she was calling, Hey, come help me, help me. He's getting me. And then suddenly the next morning he's gone. And I think that, that there's a lot of people who can identify that. Maybe they had a parent pass away or maybe they've had a relative pass away. It's just a really, uh, that's, that's just a really powerful story just from my past where I've had to just deal with things, you know, relationships and, and looking back and seeing how my father's death affected you know, my okay. life. So you were seven, right? Or eight? How old are you? Seven? I was 12. 12. 12? Yeah. You know, seven, 12. Yeah, real, real close. <laughs> yeah. I thought, I figured we're, we could go way back, folks. So yeah. you're 12 years old, um, which is even, even more beneficial to this question. So you're 12 years old. What's going through the mind of a 12 year old when you're seeing uh, lights from the ambulance? Uh, mm-hmm. There's chaos in the home. Your mom's probably freaking out. Um, yeah. What's what were you thinking? Um, I was really confused. It was, again, it was two o'clock in the morning, mm. dead asleep. And you, you kind of hear about people who are kind of deer in the headlights, if you will, to some degree. And for a few, I don't, I don't know, you, you lose track of time. But I was just so confused as to what in the world was going on. It was so sudden. And I remember... At one point, I went outside because they were our, our house was kind of interestingly shaped. So he was a big guy on a stretcher, and they're trying to get it out of there. So I went out, and I remember just praying. And I remember praying because he was a really good dad. He really cared for us, really loved us, took care of us. And I remember just saying, you know, "There's lots of bad people out there. Not him. He's wow. he's not the you know one to take." So I guess it may be pleading with God maybe is a, is a way to say it. We weren't yeah. a particularly religious you know, family or, or whatever, but, um, but I can remember that you know, specifically kind of going on there. Sure. Well, I mean, so then the funeral, well, fast forward a couple of days. Mm-hmm. Now what are you feeling? Um, well, well, that was very interesting too. I'll, I'll throw this in there. My brother was in college and he had to fly back from Nashville. And they told him, something's the matter with your dad, come home now. So that was the first time I'd ever seen my brother cry, which was, you know, very, very uh, different. Hmm. But he came home and he was just, you know, you know, obviously your father passed away. So the funeral was a little bit of a blur. Uh, you, you're, you're just seeing all these people you don't know. Everybody's telling you they're sorry. I don't really remember a lot about it. But just remember, it was, it was definitely tough, a lot of tears, and still a lot of confusion, I guess. It's probably, right. probably the same thing. Well, then, uh, you know, a few days later, uh, it obviously was, you know, completely different scenario for your mother. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How did, the, how did that, how would that transpire between you and your mom? A couple of days go by, funerals over. I mean, what were some of those moments like between the two of you? Yeah, it, it really brought us, it really brought us uh, closer together in a lot of ways, because, at that point, since my brother was in college, it's just my brother and myself. So he was in college and then it was just my mom and I. So we, we wound up spending a lot of time taking a lot of little mini vacations, uh, just to other places, just to be alone. We, we, I think I got a better respect for her to see her kind of go through that. She'd not, she, she never really slept, uh, straight through the night for years. Hmm. And in after, fact, after your dad, yeah, after my father passed away, I think it was actually within the past year that she actually slept all the way wow. through the night. So, I mean, it's, it's been a long time. Yeah. That's something else. But, but it was just, uh, we, it, it deepened our relationship. We realized how, how brief life is, how suddenly everything can change. Yeah. And so, and we have a really, really good relationship 
uh, now, which reminds me, I probably should call my mom. Uh, <laughs> you know, I think we Everybody should all call your mother today. Exactly. Listen, if you're listening to this, call your mom. That's right. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's really deep in our relationship. I, I really uh, love her and, and really respect her for all that she's gone through. So uh, your brother, he's older, obviously. And, mm -hmm. um, so he's probably, uh, five, six, seven years older than you or yeah, he's six years older, six? just enough to, to be able to beat me up. Uh, <laughs> does they still do that on a regular basis or no. just once a weekend or something? No, like I'm, I'm actually as big as he is now. So it's, it's a little oh, different than yeah, when I was different now. So that how do, you, do you guys get along fairly well? Too? Yeah. Yeah. We don't, we don't get to talk to as much or each other as much, but, um, but we, when we do get together, we have a good time. Yeah, no doubt. I can imagine it must've been a little different for your brother since because he was older, he probably had a, a different type of relationship with your dad than you mm -hmm. just because he was yeah. a little older. Yeah. So uh, how did that handle, how did that, that happen with him? But did he, did he have a tough time with transition with that or? Yeah, I think, um, I, I haven't really talked with him a lot about it. It's as you, as you mentioned, you know, it was a different scenario because I was there with him versus him getting a call saying, come home. And, and he was like, is dad okay? But they said, you know, you don't want to tell somebody your dad's passed away, you know, on the phone. Yeah. You know, when, especially when you have to take a flight somewhere. So he, I think it just made him have a lot of doubts on, you know, stuff like God and, and that kind of a thing, or, or, um, a lot of frustrations and maybe it's, it gave him some, some thoughts on, you know, why, why wasn't I there? Or I'm, I'm sure there's probably some whys like we all have at, at certain points. Sure. Yeah, we all do. I mean, I, Lord knows I go through that myself and, well, I'm going to kind of, you know, jump into to business here a little bit with, with something like that story. I mean, obviously, it's not, uh, the point is, is, it's not like making up some story like one day, yeah. and the great, the skies opened up and well, right? I mean, this is a legit yeah. story, something happened in your life. And as a result of that, there's a lot of things that could shape and, uh, and, and help to, uh, to form who you are as a man, mm -hmm. um, how you, how you deal with things in life. And, uh, you know, some of the things are one, you're, you're a, you're a super guy. You're an awesome guy. You've got a, a beautiful family and you've got 1700 children. And so you must be okay. 1600. So you, you've got a lot of, a lot of, a lot of things going on. You, you have a passion for life mm -hmm. and, and for people. Yeah. And, uh, now you're in this business thing you've got going on that, um, you, uh, you're trying to do something with people with what you're doing in your life, right? This consulting yeah. business. So consulting is kind of a, a, a played out word these days. So mm -hmm. what does, what does 127 consulting, what is that business? What is it you're trying to yeah. accomplish? And, and, um, and obviously, you know, one of the reasons I wanted to talk about your story is that people could see, you know, who you are, what kind of a person you are, you've been through some things. And I yeah. know for the fact that a lot of those things transpire into what you are passionate about in your business and for other people. Mm -hmm. uh, you really care about people and you care about your clients and you want to be able to help them be effectively heard and seen. Yeah. And I think a lot of that comes from your past, from your stories. Yeah. Uh, so, so tell us a little bit about, um, about why you, you did this, why you went in this direction. Mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily with just 127 consulting, but why are you in this yeah. type of, of, of a field period? And you know, what drives you there? And then tell us a little bit about what your company is and what you do. Yeah, so I, I really like how you said um, helping people be heard and seen. And I think we all have a story that we want to kind of communicate. Uh, and how do we fit into that into our client story, you know, in, in, um, in the best way. And I think with, with my father passing away, and just other things, as you mentioned, you know, this, that kind of build you, I, I really enjoy helping people to achieve their passion. And when I see business owners and they're struggling to really talk to their audience, uh, they, they know what they want in their head, but they don't know how to make the words come out uh, in, in a clear way. I actually have one, one client, uh, Amy, and she uh, works with a really cool um, uh, program that helps uh, students through the arts over in Atlanta. But she actually said on a, a interview, she said, I knew what I wanted to say in my head, but I just couldn't get the right words out. So uh, I like seeing the light bulb go off for people. I like seeing I've got this thing. I know what I, I want to do. I know what I want to say, but I just don't know how to word it. So people actually understand what it is. Yeah. And when I can help that light bulb go off, that's what I really, really love. That's what you know excites me. 
And, um, and that's the thing that I'm really passionate about. So that is what I do. Oftentimes it's, it's doing calls like this where I ask uh, a certain series of questions. We go through helping people, you know, be able to explain, you know, how they help their audience, what they're actually selling, what their audience actually wants. Um, and oftentimes it's not what you necessarily think they want. It, it often goes much deeper than, um, than what, what businesses are telling, you know, or what businesses give me, are Give me an example of that. That's an interesting thought. Yeah. So um, let's say you're selling a financial, you're selling financial services. Um, oftentimes financial planners and whatnot are very logical folks. They're very, you know, analytical. And I've talked with a couple of them and they're selling certain features or they're selling certain percentages that kind of thing, as opposed to going, why do people, why are people trusting you with this? What is, what do they want their life to look like? Right. Uh, what, you know, and, and then talking to those things, are, are you wanting a dream home, you know, in somewhere in Florida or, or in the mountains? Why, why is that? And then once you figure out why that is, so, so the town I live in, it's a very small town, but a lot of people move here from Atlanta and Florida. It's in North Carolina. And, when I was talking with a realtor, I was like, they are wanting to escape the hustle and bustle. They're wanting to escape traffic and, you know, people being rude and waiting in lines and just all these things. They're wanting to escape that. They want to sit on their porch with a cup of coffee and look out of the mountains and on a, you know, on a nice fall day. That's kind of what they're looking for. And the more that you can understand and talk to that feeling or that need, the more you can do that, the better that you're, you're, you're going to communicate with your audience as opposed to saying, we give you 3% better you know, return on blah, blah, blah. <laughs> right. Um, Cause that's nobody always really interesting. Cares. That's so fun. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, yeah, and especially if you're a financial planner. So, um, <laughs> you know, it's, it, that's, that's the really fun thing, but we're all kind of stuck in our own world. Like we, we see the world through a certain pair of uh, uh, glasses and, what I often do is just give an outside perspective and ask people why they're seeing certain things that way and then give them some ideas on what their audience may be actually seeing. And then we just go from there. And then we talk to those needs. So let's say with a realtor and you're selling the experience of escape, escaping where you are to a, a, a mountain retreat. Well, those are the things you want to talk about on your website, on your ads, on your videos. You want to talk about that escape. You, or escape. you want to sell that dream a little bit to people. Um, you want them to envision themselves sitting on that porch and seeing that right. as opposed to, you know, three, you know, bedroom, two bath cabin. Like that's not <laughs> exciting at all. <laughs> right, right. Um, but imagine yourself sitting here with your cup of coffee. It's a crisp fall morning and there's no traffic and no smog and none of these problems. You're just sitting here relaxing. Oh, there's a deer, you know? Oh, there's a black bear <laughs> over there, you know? And run, Forrest, run. Yeah, run, run! No, but it's okay because you're up high on your, your second story and you, you know, which is funny because where I am, there's a lot of black bears. So people regularly see them, you know, and doing their thing. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> the more of a story like that, that you can kind of communicate and tell just in your website or in your emails or your videos or whatever, that's where people are really going to uh, uh, be attracted to you. Mm -hmm. Besides my beard, obviously. Yes. There you go. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, and I want to get there one day, but maybe. You know, yeah. As long as you're not in martial arts. So there you go. <laughs> so how do you how do you do that? So like in one twenty seven consulting, do you like do you make commercials for people? Do you mm -hmm. build websites? Um, you know, what yeah. is that? How do you how do you actually take that message and implement it? Is what you're saying? Right. Yeah, yeah. I should so, ask it that way. Yeah, yeah. That's, I think that's what you were saying. You were <laughs> well, it's saying the same that thing. Sometimes eye. people think, "Do you build websites? Do you yeah, buy commercials? Yeah, yeah. Do I just come to you and say, here's a thousand dollars? Thank you.'" Yeah. yeah. So the process typically looks like this: we have a few calls and find out a little bit more about what you do, and then from there, I start asking a bunch of questions to find out how we should talk to your audience. From there, sometimes people at that point feel really, really good and say, I feel like at this point I can take my message and go, you know, spread it throughout whatever I'm doing. And some of them do, and some of them do a really good job. Other times, other folks say, I have my clarity. I have this message that I want to convey, but I don't know how to put that into words on my website, let's say. 
So I'm not a web designer. I don't do web design, but I help people rewrite the words that are often on their website because most people just kind of say, this is who we are. We've been here this many years and we won these awards or uh, they don't really know what to say necessarily on their website. So they kind of fill out some random things, <laughs> but, um, oh, your uncle, uncle Paul is there at the porch there at the mountains. Hey, there you go. There you yeah, go. Um, yeah. Um, hey, hey. <laughs> yeah. He's got an <laughs> ad website or yeah. whatever. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, we, we want to talk about their vision, their ideas, your audiences, vision, ideas, and dreams, that kind of thing. So you want to put that, you know, on your website. Or maybe you're, uh, I was talking with a client the other day and she realized she was talking too much about uh, herself and numbers and other things. And she needed to talk more about her audience's frustrations. This is specifically in an email series. So we went through and uh, worked on rewriting the words for that. So it's one part um, understanding and gaining clarity on a message, but then it's also uh, going through one part is uh, creating copy and words uh, for, you know, websites or emails or videos, that kind of thing. Yeah. Email. That's a, that's a whole nother animal. Um, mm -hmm. That's a whole lot of work, buddy. Um, to be able to throw 50, 75, a hundred emails to one person throughout the matter of a few months. Uh, is that something you help people do? Well, I mean, you don't even have to, you don't even have to do that many. Obviously d different campaigns call for different things. But one thing I think is really, really strong is going with a concept of a story is telling just short stories in your emails. They, they don't have to be, you know, hard sale messages. Uh, because again, you're, you're wanting folks to know, like, and trust you. So you're going to repel some people and you're going to attract some people. And that's exactly what you want to do. You want to repel the people who are not a good fit. And you want to attract the people who, who do like you. So writing emails uh, if you can just kind of keep that mindset of uh, telling some kind of a story, just keeping it brief, making it very easy and clear to read. Uh, th that's a lot of things that you can kind of do and not have to write a ton. You don't have to send in somebody an email every single day unless they like hearing from you every single day. There's some people who do and some people don't. It just really depends on. Yeah, on what's, what's too much? That's a good question. I mean, yeah, you know, I get oh, too many emails. Mm -hmm. uh, some to the point where I go, deaf to some people's messages because yeah. I just, I'm tired of hearing it. Uh, you, yeah. get, you kind of get the point. Um, so is there, is there a rule to that? Is there a, no, I think, I think you just kind of touched on a little bit there. You said to some people's messages, mm -hmm. other people's, it's not the case. So, uh, there are, there are people you like hearing from and you'll pay attention to. And there's people that at a certain point you're not interested. It's not relevant anymore. And that doesn't mean you read every single email from the people you are interested in, but there may be a good way to say it is relevance. You know, are, are they relevant in your life or, or not? And right. um, that is the thing is bring people value, but be relatable, be friendly and approachable and build that relationship uh, through, through email. But again, it should also be a similar story and relationship uh, through your website or if you do videos or that kind of a thing too. So you're basically 127 consulting is a, is a business that helps people to stay relevant mm -hmm. uh, and to be able to be relevant with the people they're supposed to be relevant with. Correct. Yeah. And just, and also just making sure to, to throw that, that um, clear communication side in there. Yeah. I, and j that's just kind of a, a piece in there, but, but yeah, I, it's, it's relevance. You know, there, sure. we have so much information in this world. Everybody's, wanting to get a piece of your time. Everybody's, every ad is wanting to get, you know, a piece of your time and that competes with family and competes with it with, with so much. So you really have to, to be relevant to people and no doubt. you're not going to be to everybody, but that's okay. It's a giant world. And I'm realizing <laughs> that <laughs> it's a pretty big place. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you hop on LinkedIn just for a minute, you see how many people, that was something that was very interesting to me the other day, just, just seeing, you know, the influencers and all this kind of thing. And I've talked with people, your audience may have heard of Gary Vaynerchuk. Some of them may have, may have not, but I talked to somebody the other day and I said, you know, have you heard of Gary Vaynerchuk? And they said, no, who was that? And it's <laughs> you just, know him if you know him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I see your 10 X, you know, sticker there. There's people yeah. who heard of Grant Cardone. There's people who've never heard, never, you know, he's selling out stadiums and you know, Gary V 5,000 that I went to in Miami. Crazy. There you go. 
there you go. So, but there's people who ha have no idea who in the world he is. And so that was, it's a good perspective to right. keep in mind that, you know, if you're struggling with that kind of, kind of a thing and being known, uh, some of the biggest names in the industry, people have no idea who in the world they are. That's true. So, so in this type of a world, and we live in this marketing world, and uh, I'm exposed to a lot of different uh, teachers, c coaches, trainers, whatnot. Mm -hmm. And there are all kinds of packages and programs that are out there. I think some of them are just played out and, uh, you know, the price points are, are crazy sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, is this kind of like if somebody comes to 127 con consulting, is this, um, uh, are they paying for a coaching program? That's like you go through six months or eight months and all of a sudden you graduate into something else. And, mm -hmm. or is this, how does that work? Is it, what's that relationship look like between you and a client? Yeah, it's, it's really custom because everybody seems to need something a little bit different. The first, almost everybody we go through about three calls and they're usually Zoom video calls like this. We go through there, as I mentioned before, we, we go through certain questions and, and find out a lot about what they're doing and what their goals are. That's a big thing is if you don't really kind of know where you're going, then it's hard to kind of get there. Yeah. But once we kind of figure that out, then uh, the implementation will be dependent upon the, the client themselves. Because I said some folks, some folks, uh, you know, I've got some folks who know how to write really good copy. They're really good. They could be copywriters. And after they get a little bit of a better understanding of who their audience is, then they can write to those needs. But then I have other folks who, you know, maybe they are very analytical or maybe they're not a good writer and they need help, you know, plugging in an email series or they need, um, maybe a video series. One of my good clients, we created a, a really cool video series for him and it's been just, he's had amazing results from that. I actually had somebody call up and, and went through his uh, eight, seven or eight part video series. I don't recall how many there were, but they called him up and said, we're ready for you to come here. Like we, we totally trust you. We know you know what you're talking about. And he was able to sell and who knows what he was doing. Maybe he was eating cereal when the people, you know, <laughs> are taking a jog or whatever, when the people actually, um, <clears throat> we're watching the videos, but, uh, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of different, um, ways to skin a cat in that, but it almost always starts off with, with three initial calls just to, uh, make so sure you don't like cats is what you just said then to me. You know what? I had two cats in my life and they were yeah. barn cats. So. <laughs> yeah. I'm not too big of a fan of cats either, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm a dog. I'm a dog lover, but uh, yeah, cats are okay. I they're okay with teriyaki sauce and stuff like that. Oh, delicious. Oh yeah. They're so good. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me how people can, uh, can get a hold of you. You said that uh, a little bit on the front side, but uh, yeah. is it uh, primarily they would engage you through your website, through LinkedIn? Um, how do people get a hold of you? Yeah. So uh, website 127 consulting.com. That's O N E the number 27, the word consulting.com. Also have a video series, like I was saying, uh, with a client of mine. I have a video series myself called. Uh, if you go to fix these five f i v e dot com, you can see some different marketing problems, uh, five marketing mistakes that you might be making, and that's free. Oh, that uh, sounds fun and free. I like that too. Yeah, there you go. Two free things. Fun yeah, and free. fix these five. Fun and free. There you go. But yeah, also uh, obviously LinkedIn and uh, Facebook. You know, on those things, Lee Bradshaw. You could probably find me. Yeah, pretty easy. Yeah. You're yeah, going to leave Bradshaw on my whole friends list. There you go. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so how about, how about LinkedIn for you? I mean, a lot of, fix, a lot of folks are going to be watching this uh, interview, this podcast uh, from LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. So um, what have you, for me, LinkedIn has not been a big deal. I've been on it since mm -hmm. 2013, I found out. Oh, wow. I didn't even know when I, I joined in 2013. And uh, I did nothing until probably about maybe a couple of months ago. And, yeah. and uh, now it's really just fantastic. But, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, what, what is, is, is Facebook the thing for you? Is, is Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn? What's, what's your, where's your social media home, Lee? Where do you live? Uh, it's funny. I, my background originally was Facebook ads and then some YouTube ads. I started moving over to, you, or to uh, LinkedIn about six months you know, or so ago, just started really kind of focusing on it. Maybe, maybe eight months. I don't know exactly, but I found that, you know, go where your audience is. Like if your audience is stay at home moms, then LinkedIn's probably not going to be the place for you. you know, your audience is, is, um, CEOs and then LinkedIn will be the right spot for you. So for me, that's where most of my audience is. So, 
uh, that's where I hang out. I'm starting to hang out a lot more there than Facebook. It's funny because I'll, you know, cross promote and cross post some things and, and I'm almost like not really wanting to do, uh, Facebook. Um, it's so funny. Page. I am too. I've been yeah. Facebook for so long and now it's like, Oh man, I haven't even been on Facebook a couple of days and yeah. I haven't, I don't know. I've never not been on Facebook for more. Yeah, yeah. So it's just amazing, right? It's yeah. just it's nice. But now I'm addicted to LinkedIn. So it's the same thing, different, different drug. <laughs> yeah. And I wish they, you know, would get the, uh, or pretty soon they'll get the live video and all that squared away. I know you'll be hit, hitting that once that's. Uh, oh yeah. They, they need to get a few things squared away, but that's yeah. another story. But it's a, it's a cool platform. And I'm ex- I, um, I still like Facebook's targeting, you know, a lot of people, uh, I, I had a friend of mine who was, he does uh, church uh, websites. He was able to target, you know, pastors uh, or, but like worship leaders and all that kind of thing. So he's able, I mean, the, the targeting of Facebook is amazing. So um, there's still a lot that you can really do on there. You just got to make sure you do something that's interesting enough to stop people from scrolling past uh, like cat videos. And, and yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a big world, right? There's yeah. a, lot of, there's a lot of lot there. So it's, it's, uh, I think a little easier to be heard on LinkedIn at this point for, yeah, for this type so. of a market, you know? Well, that's fantastic. So Lee, that's, it's pretty exciting to know what you're able to offer folks and, uh, and to be able to bring them through a journey from, what in the world do I do? I, mm-hmm. I want, you know, they might be really great at what they do. They just don't know how to, how to tell people that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, part of what you do, part of your story is to help them to tell their story. And you, uh, you help equip people with, with uh, information, with, uh, with tools to be able to, to, to launch into their whole world. Mm-hmm. Uh, once they learn how to do a little bit of copywriting, then, then like you said, they can, they can start going from there. They mm-hmm. might not need you anymore. So how would you, uh, how would you work yourself out of a job with a customer? Is that something you want to do? Do you want to be their, their consulting guy for life or do you, well, financial yeah. is pretty nice, but you know, I mean, yeah. No, um, so how I guess would be if somebody, uh, is good once they know how they help people, uh, how to talk to people better. If they if they know those things, um, and then from there they feel really confidently. I'll I'll say I'll say this: if they know those things and then they try them and start seeing the success, then that will be a good way to work myself out of that. Um, not everybody is good at that, and not everybody has the time to do that. Right? Because as you you and I know the the you only have so much time in a day and there's some things you don't need to be doing. Right. So depending on, you know, how your business goes. So uh, those would be the folks I would stay on longer with. The other folks would be the folks that, that I help out and um, are, you know, kind of bless them and vice versa. And they go on and do amazing things. Oh, change the world. There you go. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, and it sounds kind of, uh, not silly, but it sounds kind of cliche, but, but, you know, one of my clients is a speaking coach and she's helping people to get over the fear of standing up and, and sharing their message, you know, with their audience. And she's helping a ton of people. She's a you know, TEDx speaker and whatnot. She's helping a ton of folks. And now that she's able to do that more clearly, um, it is, I'm really excited to see what she's, uh, what she's going to do with that. It's almost like I'm giving her the, you know, ammunition and she's going out and fighting the battle. So, yeah. Um, That's a great analogy. It's pretty good. Yeah. So that's awesome. Well, well, Lee, thanks so much for sharing with us a little bit about who you are and what your business is. I think it's very helpful because folks might see you periodically as they scroll through their news feed and see this guy on there. And you usually share some really great content. Well, usually, I mean, you always share good. Thank you. You're Not always, but sometimes. (laughs) But it's usually what my usual was is it usually uh, is, is, quick. I mean, you do something that's a, a minute or two or something like mm-hmm. that for folks. It's a uh, bite-sized stuff. Yeah, It's always valuable. And uh, now I just figure they get a chance to know who you are a little bit more. And, um, and if they have a need for their business, their, their product, their brand, uh, they know, you know how they can get in touch with you now, what, they can, what you can do for them. So yeah. that's yeah. pretty powerful stuff, especially with copywriting words. Words are powerful. Mm-hmm. And to be able to help people know how to use those together uh, is really the key to success. I mean, if you know yeah. what to say and how to say it, uh, then all of a sudden you've got people that want to listen. So yeah, yeah, that's great. All right. So it's one twenty seven. the word one O N E mm-hmm. the yep. number two, seven consulting.com. 
one yep. foot seven because it's only going to be right down here. Oh, yeah. All right, we'll, we'll put that link up there as well. Is there anything else? So let's say somebody's watching today, Lee, and um, you know, uh, this is always about hope. The show's called Hope Revealed. Mm -hmm. If there's a way that you could reveal hope to somebody, your ideal client, right? Let's mm -hmm. say you're talking to that person today. Um, how would you be able to to show them or or uh, give them hope in just a little bit of time here. And I'll let you have that last word and, and share that, that moment of hope with them. I think I would just say that if, if you're really passionate about something and it's uh, something that really, really drives you, it's the thing that makes you wake up. Don't, don't quit on that thing. Don't one. I think one thing I would say is I, I talk with people a lot about life and death being in the tongue. You can, kill yourself or kill other people by the way you say things. So don't speak. If you know you've got passion, don't speak uh, death to whatever that passion is. Speak life to it. And as a buddy of mine, Walker always says, you know, I haven't figured, maybe you haven't figured out how to do something yet. There are ways to figure it out. Don't quit on it. Don't, you know, quelch it. Don't stop it. Uh, keep going and, and uh, discover how to make that passion work. Sounds pretty good. Let's rock and roll. All right, folks, there's Lee Bradshaw, 127 Consulting. And if you are in need of somebody that can really help uh, identify those things in your life and your business and to be able to clearly, effectively communicate those things, uh, I don't know anybody better than Lee Bradshaw to talk to about that. He will really ask you the right questions. He's a question guy uh, to be able to get the answers that you need. And uh, your, your folks will need your clients, your ideal clients, right? That's another marketing word. If you haven't heard that one, you'll hear it a lot. <laughs> uh, and, and to find that clarity in who you are and what you're trying to do. So, Lee, thanks so much for spending time with us here today and sharing with us a little bit about what you do. And uh, my hope is that you will have uh, great continued success in your business and that um, Planty will survive. Yes, I'm, I'm hoping Planty will survive too because um, I don't want to kill Plenty. No, so. no killing of plants. Power yeah. of life and death is in the, the watering thing. There you go. Yeah, I have to remember that. So. You got to water plenty. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Lee. Appreciate yeah. you. Thanks, buddy.